Hi, everybody. Welcome again to the uh, Winemaker Series from Cork Wines and Whiskies. Um, and today we're happy to have with us Paul Scotto from Scotto Cellars, uh, and I believe uh, in, in Lodi, California. And he's here to talk to us about his uh, Napa Valley project, the uh, Jay McClellan Cellars. Uh, hi, Paul, and welcome. Uh, thank, and thank you for having me. Oh, our pleasure. And, and for our audience, where are you right now? Where in the world are you? So for me, I, I actually travel a lot amongst our different wineries. So we are Scotto Cellars. We have three wineries in Lodi, California. Lodi, California is about 40 miles south of Sacramento in California. And then I go to Napa. In Napa, we have a winery there that is just east of the Napa Valley. Up, if you look on a map up near Lake Berryessa, and that's where the Jay McClellan and the Lost Chapters are made. And they also have a winery up in the Sierra foothills, which is east of Sacramento going towards Tahoe. Right, right. I bet today, you it's yeah, better I'm here in Lodi at our uh, winemaking facility. Um, and I, could, I was just going to say, I bet you it's better scenery than the city of Toronto is for everybody right now. <laughs> what temp, what temp is up there right now? How cold is it? Uh, it's kind of cold ish and damp, but spring is kind of starting to spring. So it's probably, I think probably about 10 degrees Celsius here right now. So, but everybody, we're still in lockdown, Paul. So everybody's been locked into their house and. Oh, so. I can't, I've been through that. I'm happy it's coming. You can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yeah. here it's, yeah. things are starting to open back up again sporting events people are allowed to go it's so it's been it's been good i don't want to say great right. it's getting better <laughs> so but temperature tell wise us we're, we're going from winter to summer the spring is like we're passing spring well that's good i mean trust me if i could have some sun right now thank god so i want to show you a picture of outside then so why not tell us a little bit about the Jay McClellan project, like how it came about, what your philosophy is for yeah. it? So with the Scotto Sellers, uh, my brother started the company for Scotto Sellers about 20 years ago. And we were focusing more mostly on California wines, Lodi wines, um, some North Coast wines. And then we and sorry to interrupt. Years. Sorry to, yeah. for our audience, you know, the Black Ridge Cellars, the Black Ridge Vineyards, wines that we have here are from Scotto. And that's one of our oldest um, made brands that we've been doing for a very long time. So with Napa though, we had an opportunity to get into a Napa winery. And with Napa, we did not want to um, extend one of our current brands that we had that was a California Appalachian. And so we wanted to come up with a new Napa brand that was significant and had a story. So the story around the Jim McClellan is Jay McClellan is a, uh, or was a historian in the wine world here in California. At a time, he was president of Almaden. He was president of Geyser Peak. So he was a, he was an old timer. I mean, he used to go to the old time lunches and have lunch with Madavi and have lunch with all of the original founders of the Napa area. And right. so when my brother started his company, the, our Scott of Cellars 20 years ago, my dad told my brother he needed to contact John McClellan. That's what JMC stands for. So John McClellan for many years was my brother's mentor. And we thought, you know, what a better way to show our appreciation for what he's done for our family than to name our high-end um, Napa wines after him. So that's where the JMC came from. And unfortunately, Great, he passed away about two and a half years ago. Um, oh. He was a strong man strong piece of the family. And he also was stubborn. And the reason I say that is he was stubborn about the varietals we would do with JMC. We wanted to do other varietals and um, this leads into the lost chapters. So we had some other varietals, we had Zinfandel, we had some other varietals that he didn't fit. He didn't think fit in the JMC line. He wanted to do Cab, Merlot, Chardonnay, you know, the typical Bordeaux wine varietals that you would see. So the Lost Chapters came about because we were buying grapes. We were getting good deals on grapes and bringing it up to our Napa facility to make wine. And at some point in time, my brother and I were sitting at the wine show, which is uh, the wine symposium, which is the biggest 
wine show here in the United States. I'm sure people from Canada come down for it also. And he was looking through our inventory and said, Paul, we have these great wines in Napa right now, these barrels, but John doesn't want to put them in JMC. We got to come up with another brand. They're very small lots and come up with a name. So I thought about it. I'm saying, thinking to myself, lost chapters, lost chapters. We've got these barrels that we don't want to be get lost. So I came up with the name lost chapters. And the cool thing about the lost chapters is the goal was to have that front label look like an old vintage book cover. And we wanted it to be a touchy feely label. So it's a, it is the most expensive label that we make. It's got a lot of gold on it, a lot of texture yep, on it. Yep, and then the cool yep. thing, if you flip the uh, bottle around, the back label looks like a title page of a book. So on there, you'll see that one's volume eight. Right now, I think we're on volume 18. So lots of the lost chapters range from 70 cases to a Cabernet lot, which we've done with, I think it was about 500 cases. So right. they come and go. If there's a vintage that you like or a varietal you like, it might not come back for three or four years. So they are, they're great. Um, we have people, I mean, I've been trying to collect them myself. There's so many, there's been so many volumes now, but it's been great with a lot of small uh, wine shops where people come in and they want to own all the volumes, which is really right. cool. Right. That's very cool. So I think I, from what you were saying, you make a lot of different varietals within both the Lost Chapters and McClellan. But I yes. think for our uh, purposes in Ontario, um, we have the Lost Zinfand the Lost Chapter Zin, the 2014 Volume yes. 8. We have the Jay McClelland Merlot and the Jay McClelland Cab 2017. So maybe what we could do is why don't we talk about those three wines and we can start off with the Lost Chapter Zin. Kind of give us your take on, on the wine. So the Lost Chapter Zinfandel, first off, the cool thing about it, it is 100% Zin. You know, nowadays in today's world of wine, it's really hard to find varietals i mean we do the same thing i do the same thing it comes out of blending but it's hard to find varietals especially when you're going through barrels that you feel could be a standalone wine so the cool thing with the zinfandel it is 100 percent zinfandel um this zin came from the oak knoll region of napa um oak knoll <clears throat> in napa you have the highway 29 side that runs through the mandavi and a lot of the big wineries right or the yeah. high the traffic and then you've got the Silverado Trail side which is the side that butts up against the the mountains to the east and the vineyard came from the Oak Knoll area on that side of Napa. Um, this wine has a lot of fruit. Zinfandel is a fruit forward wine. Um, a lot of red fruit. It, it kind of balances though. You get a little blackberry and blueberry on it but the good thing I like about it, it has a nice little spice component to it um, with a little bit of earthiness to it. Um, yeah, what I, I found, enjoyed, sorry, yeah. Paul, what I found is I find most Zinfandels really high alcohol. Yes. Sometimes you can kind of get that burn. This didn't have that. So for me growing up, drinking wine since I was little, my grandpa would pour a little bit of wine in my water glass. You know, growing up, it was always making wines that are food friendly, that are approachable, that you can have without food. And yep. you could have it without food, but the goal, it, it just doesn't take over the meal. Right. I mean, it's there to complement what you're eating. So that's the right. big thing. I and mean, this is a great food, um, wine. Have you had this with any foods yourself? Oh yeah. 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 No. And that's, that's one of the things, one of the reasons that I've, I've come to really enjoy this wine is because I think you can drink it on your own, on its own. And Definitely. yes, if you're having a burger or if you're having a steak, yeah, you can have that wine too. And it's funny you say burger because that's one of my favorite things to have with this wine. And I don't want to say, you know, too gourmet-ish, but like a burger with like bacon and blue cheese on it, money. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, 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 this has become a, a, a favorite of mine um, because I think if you're looking for a Zin, it puts everything that a Zin is in it but it doesn't have the huge alcohol content to it. Yeah, and I mean, for me as a winemaker as a whole, 
it comes down to balance, right? I mean, the acidity, the sugar, oak, everything that goes into the wine, you want it to be layered and balanced on your palate. You don't want any yeah. of those things to overpower the palate. I yeah, mean, oak is always, great. you know, oak is always an interesting thing, right? Because yeah. people think brand new oak and they think, yeah, oaky. And, you know, you've got the Chardonnays and different things out there that are too much oak on them. You want the oak there to add that spice characteristic, not to be, you don't want it to be woody. You want it to be oaky and not woody. Right, exactly. Great. That's awesome. Now we're going to move to the Jay McClellan Merlot. This is the 2017. Tell us a little bit about that. So a cool thing about our uh, Napa wines also, for those of you that up there that know um, Napa wineries, um, our wine consultant that consults with myself and also works with our winemaker that's on site there is Mitch Cosentino. So Mitch has been making wine for a very, very, very long time. And he is, he is very picky about the wines that he drinks and about the wines that he tells his friends about. This 2017 JMC Merlot, he is single-handedly selling more of it, I think, than any of our distributors because he, he says these come around once in, a, you know, once in a lifetime, and this Merlot has been one of those, and it's selling quick. Um, and it starts really off with that balance. You know, a lot of people look down on Merlot. You know, Merlot is usually blended into Cabernets and blended in other things. But what we do when we're making the JM, JMC wines is we pull all the barrels out. So we think, imagine on our crush pad, we have 100 barrels out there. And in that mix, we have Merlot, Cab, Petit Bordeaux, Cab Franc, um, and maybe if we had uh, maybe a little bit of Malbec. And we literally go through and taste every single barrel. And right now, I just did it two weeks ago. We're going through some of the eight, the 18s, getting ready to bottle. But we start labeling different barrels with different, you know, adjectives or different notes. You know, one barrel might say, great mid palate. The next barrel might say uh, spicy notes, you know, another one, great oak finish, but we start building our spice rack and knowing that we're going to be doing a Merlot, no we're going to be doing a Cabernet, no we're going to, we're going to be doing some other blends. We start earmarking individual barrels to what wine is going to be made. So this Merlot though, as we were going through these 17, 2017 barrels, we were thinking, Early on, you know, we're tasting through five or five, six barrels thinking, holy cow, this is something special, you know, and we started going through and figuring out how many cases can we actually do, because we also need to keep some of those barrels for the Cabernet, for our right. Meritage blend that we do. So, right. um, but going into more detail on the Merlot, the Merlot special it's, it's got a, if you think of, I've learned from Mitch, you start thinking about tasting wines and thinking about it in shapes. Yeah. The way it goes in your palate, it comes in nice and round and kind of broadens out, but then it has the acidity there at the end where to work. It kind of brings you back almost like a pear shape, right? It brings it yeah. back on the finish of your palate and it's got such width to it. And it's just, it coats your palate. It's, it's elegant. It's got, um, a velvet feel to it on your palate. For and, me, and I get Paul, a lot of, yeah. Would, would, would there be any, and, and I think, you know, for our customers, our, the, our audience, we've heard about the fires, the wildfires. Would there be anything within any of this that would have any issues with that? Or is that? No. So for us, luckily, 2017, the wildfires in Napa, happened towards the end of the season. Right. So okay. we had the only thing left that we had. So I mean, two, two interesting stories, but this season, the only thing left that we had, we had a small amount of Cabernet left on the vines and the right. vines where we get Cabernet from are East Napa up in the Hills. Uh, it's up in Pope Valley and up in that area, we did, was not affected by fire or smoke in 2017. But the uh, other okay. interesting story is, which I think plays a big role in this wine for the Merlot, 
is we had brought that grape in. We had that grape. It was fermenting. And it hadn't even started fermenting yet. We had just destemmed it. It just went into the tank. This uh-huh. is when the fire started. We lost electricity for our facility, right? And you have no electricity. It means you have no chiller. means you have no way to keep anything cold. So that wine typically goes through a soak over, you know, two days on the skins before we inoculate it. This one ended up, I think, ended up soaking. It was either three, it was actually, I think it was four to five days. So it really sat on the skins for a long time before we inoculated the tank. And I, oh, okay. I, we lucked out because those days were cool. So the, the, the juice never got hot and it never started going on its own for fermentation. So once the power came back on, we were able to get up there and start the inoculation, start the fermentation of the swine. But that's really where that deep fruit comes from on the, on that wine. And this one won a couple of uh, pretty prestigious awards, I think, right? The 217? Yes. Round? Let me, well, real quick, I can look it up really quick. It won a lot, a lot of awards. Yeah, um, I think it did. I, I think. Sorry, it... I'm trying to see if I could pull it up really quick on here. Well, it's on our Cork Wines and Whiskey website, corkwinesandwhiskeys.ca, but it did win a couple of pretty prestigious awards. So if it comes up for you, that's great. But that's that's amazing. So now what we can go into is the Jay McClelland Cab Sove 2017. Just so you know, Paul, we had the 16 through the market and we sold out of that. We don't order hundreds of cases, but we had the 16 and we sold through that. So that was really popular wine. And now we brought in the 17. So the 17 there, as I'm looking for the Merlot one, the first thing that came up was the 17. That got a gold medal in the San Francisco Wine Chronicle competition. I mean, that is one of the biggest uh, competitions here in the United States. Um, it got a 92, was a, I think it was a 92 points in that competition. So this one, the breakdown on the JMC, you got 92.5% cap. 5% Merlot and 2.5% Cab Franc. You know, a lot of people would think 2.5%, you know, what the heck is that going to change in a wine? But it really does. You know, I, I, I explained to everybody, it's similar to making, uh, say, chicken. You could add a small amount of a spice that will overpower your food for that night. Um, you know, it could be anything, any type of spice, but the perfect amount really brings all the other flavors together on that food. It's, it's the same thing when we're blending these wines. So that yeah. two and a half percent, yeah, we didn't have to do it, but when we, you know, we don't, we're never satisfied when we're making the blends. It's how can we make it better? And when we found this one single barrel, we thought that barrel is gonna be perfect for the Merlot. It, it, and the reason for it, we added it, it added a little bit of a spicy component um, to the Cabernet. Yeah, this is a wonderful so on this wine. one. I mean, this wine here, it's always fun for me to go back and look, you know, when I wrote the winemaking notes, because it was, it was, you know, it was a while ago. And I always like to see what I think now compared to what it was then. Um, but I'll read you what I originally had on. There was black cherry, currant, rhubarb and a touch of uh, red rose. Um, and people will say red rose. What the heck? But it has, it, you know, when I said that it had to do with the had an elegance to it, right? It had a little bit of a perfume note to it um, on it. So it's a lot of Napa cabs, you know, you brought up alcohols before. You can't taste the alcohol in this one. The alcohol in this one is at 14.8, but it comes together in the wine. It does not taste, it doesn't come across as being a hot or a a big wine. Um, This wine has depth to it. This wine will go with a hearty steak, definitely. Um, a filet or even a a New York strip or a porterhouse, something big and juicy. Uh, Like a burger. (laughs) Burgers, wines go great with with burgers all the time. I know you guys don't have, don't have tri-tip up there, tri-tip cuts of meat, uh, but it's the back end of the cow. It's really big in California, but one of the neighboring, okay. So one of the neighboring places here, they do a tri-tip hamburger. So it's a lot leaner. Oh. Oh. But like this would really go, it would go really good with even like a uh, bison burger. Ah. 
something yeah. lean. Good. Well, that's amazing. Uh, uh, I mean, again, uh, that's such great information, and and I I really appreciate you joining us. Um, we we built a a the, what I call the the California or the Napa the classic Napa mix case. So you get two of the lost chapters in, two of the Merlot, and two of the uh, two of the um, cab. Uh, but anybody can come on and order it at uh, www.corkwinesandwhiskies.ca and we'll be happy to sell it to you. But Paul, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. And then um, one, one last thing is the cool thing with those two packs. If you ever go to a friend's house, all, all three of these wines, you will, you will be a cloud, a crowd pleaser with these wines. I mean, these are definitely, definitely sharing wines um, to share different uh, memories, make memories and have it with either food or by itself with, with friends and family. I agree. I agree. Thanks very much again. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.